Okay, so welcome to the general topology series lectures. And we'll mainly be focusing on the text topology, like the book is called Topology by Moncris. And the prerequisite for this course theoretically is none. But it is a lot better if you have experienced uh, proof based calculus or namely analysis okay and the coverage will be entirely chapter 2 to chapter 7 and some chapter 8 stuff okay so all right let's just jump to the first lecture and uh, the title for the first lecture is called Topological Spaces, Bases, and Sub-Bases. Okay, so um, topology here, historically, it is like generalizing. The study of topology starts from um, the Euclidean spaces and straight lines, okay? And we'll see many like familiar results in calculus going to be proved in topological forms, in the language of topology. So it is like more like generalized calculus. And we'll start with the definition of what is a topological space. So here, basically, if you fix a set X and a collection of a subset of X, so T is a subset of a power set of X. And the power set of X is a set of all subsets of X. Okay, a subset of the power set so basically, some collections of subset of X is a topology on X. So this collection is a topology on X. If it has like the empty in set in the entire set X is in T, and it is closed under arbitrary union and also closed under finite intersection. Okay, so this is like the three simple axiom gives arrays the notion of topology on a given set x and notationally a pair xt is a topological space and for sets u in the collection so for the sets in the topology we all call them the open sets okay so they're, they're the open sets for this topological space example these two sets itself is a topology it's called a trivial topology and the entire sub tower power set is also a topology, as you can be verified, right? And it's called a discrete topology. Okay. And so given two topologies, we want to compare them, right? Given T, T prime and topology on X, we said if T is finer than T prime, means that T prime is contained in T. So this means that T has more subsets in X. So basically, it is more like finer, like more, you know, more like accurate in some sense, right? And the other way around, it is coarser than T prime if you're contained in a finer topology, right? So this is just like set theory wise containment. Okay, so we can compare two, but not necessarily two topologies can be, can be compared. Like this is not necessary, right? Like, yeah. And in linear algebra, every vector space is generated by a basis. We know that, right? It is the proof by the axiom choice implies Zorn's lemma. And in topology, we have the similar notion. Usually, it is hard to give the topology by specify all the open sets. So we're going to have the same notion of, of uh, a basis, right, as the title pointed out. So here, what we mean, we're going to define what is a basis is. So fix a set X and a subset of the power set is a basis for a topology on X. So this is just a basis for a topology on X if we have for any X, there is a basis element such that it contains X. And also if, if uh, X is in B1, B2, then there should be exists another B3 such that the B3 is contained in this and also contains X. So basically, if you, um, so for example, this X, this is B1, and this is B2, right? We should have another B3, right? And we're gonna define the topology T generated by the basis. 
So we're gonna give the topology generator the basis as we specify its open sets, such that the u, the set u is open if and only if this implication is true. So x and u implies a and b such that x and b and u. Okay, so let's verify that this topology generator b, like by this definition, it is indeed a topology. So first, if u is empty set, well, this vacuum is true because this is false, then the entire implication is automatically true, right? And if u is, if u is equal to x, then by condition one, right? By condition one, right? So x is, and if we have a collection in the basis, and we let u denote their union, then if x is in u, then we know that x is in some u alpha, if x is in u some u alpha, then it is a b such that x is in b is contained in u alpha. But the u alpha, right, it is contained in the big U. Right? So if x is in u, x is b such that x and b contain in u. So arbitrary um, union is a un uh, open. And if u1, u2 are open, and we fix x and their intersection, then Right, we want to check the finite intersection. So x is in u1, u2. x in u1, there exists two bases, separate bases, such as duh and duh. So which means that you're in both, which you're in both by condition two, there is another one, right? This is this. So u1 intersect u2, it is again open. And the finite case is followed by induction, right? So we just check two and the induction hypothesis is gonna be followed. You, you can check it yourself, it's like really easy. I'll say, yeah. I mean, okay, it's not like really easy. It's like, um, you can check if you want, right? So here comes the lemma. Fix the set X and uh, if the topology is generated by the basis, right? Then this topology is precisely the collection of arbitrary unions of B lambdas. So open sets, every open set is uh, some unions of D lambdas. Okay, so we're gonna prove it. So we can describe their open sets by, so when we say a topology generated by a basis, then all the open sets is basically just a union of some B lambdas. So first, if B lambdas and B, then we know that blah, 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 blah. So, so the arbitrary, because, okay, this means that B is open, right? B is open in the, the topology generated by it. So all the basis elements are open, which means that all the arbitrary unions are again open, right? Now, given an open set, we, by definition, right, for any X, there's a BX such that this. So if we run X into entire U, because for, for each X, there's a BX, right? If we run for the entire U, and we take their union, and this union is gonna be precisely equal to u. Now you can think about it, right? Thus, open sets can be described as a union, a union of sets in the collection. So here we have proven our lemma. Okay, so each u is open as a union of sets in b. But it need not to be a unique, which means that, like this is different from the linear algebra, right? Linear algebra means that every element in the, the span, right? The the vector space is generated by the basis, right? The basis is basically like the span of it. If you're in the span, then there's a unique linear comp composition, right? But this one, the union, right? The union, the union is like similar, similar to similar to the sum. All right, so when we have, we want to check when the collection is a, is a basis. So given, we have given a topological space and we have a collection of open sets such that it satisfies these condition, such that this condition states that for any open sets and any X and U, there exists C and C such that X and C and U, right? So if this is a collection of open sets such that it satisfies this, uh, this condition, then this collection is a basis, is a basis for T. So basically it means that if you're in collection of open sets such that I satisfy this, 
then the topology given is exactly the same as the basis generated uh, I mean the ba uh, the topology generated the basis okay. so first we're going to verify the, the clashes of basis well the first condition is very easy because x is open so blah 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 for the second condition right for the second condition x is in c1 and c2 but c1 and c2 are open sets which means that their intersection is again open well by hypothesis open sets right such that for any open sets right our c1 intersects c2 is open set there is another or there is another c3 such that the, so this precisely is a basis and we're going to check that the topology generated by c is the same as uh, the original topology give me u open and t give me u and t and x and u we know that um, right this is by our condition well this is by our condition right for any u and t x and u there exists c and c such as x and c subset and u this is by our hypothesis right, this is by our hypothesis and but remember, this precisely means that U is open and the topology generated by C. This is again also the definition of the topology generated by C. Right? So X and U exist C to this, then U should be in T prime. And conversely, if you're in T prime, then it means that you're a union of sets in C. Right, but if a union of sets and C sets and C are open, so you're open, you're open in the original topology. If you're here, right, it's generated by C, which means a union of sets. But the sets and C are the open sets. So I mean, open, open like they're in this T, right? So yeah, exactly. Thus, they're the same. So basically, we have a condition of a collection of opposites for of being a basis for the given topology. Now, to compare topologies, we're gonna see that well, if given two bases on the same set, then the following are equivalent. First, that t prime is finer than t. Second, is that for any x and x, for any b and b, such as x and b, then there exists a b prime from another collection such that we have this con this relation. So this means that t prime is finer than t. Well, let's prove two implies one. So if we have this, we want to show that if u is in t, then u should be in t prime. So if u is in t, x is in u, and any x in u, right? Then, since b generates t, because you're in t, right? t is generated by b, which means that we have this. Well, we have this, right, here. So we have a B prime such that we have this. So which means that for X and U, there exists B prime such that X and B prime contained in U. Precisely means that U is in T prime. Okay, so T is in T prime. For N1 applies to, for X and X and the B such that X and B, well, B is in this topology is in t b is in t right which means that b is in t prime if, if b is in t prime there exists a b prime such that this because this is by the definition right it is in the topology generated by this basis so we have this condition right it's open then we have this okay so we have a uh, equivalent uh condition of basis so we, we're gonna use this to prove that um, at Euclidean space, we different uh, the stoop norm, stoop metric, and and the Euclidean metric are equivalent to the, because the topology they generated are the same. We're gonna use two, and we're gonna see implies one. So that's for later. Okay. Some definitions uh, in R, right? We we have down to the earth. 
we can talk about logical spaces over and over again, but we have need we need to work on like examples, actual examples. So here we see that let B be the collection of all open intervals. Then the topology generated by this collection is called the standard topology on R. So we've been living in the standard topology on R, kids. And if the topology generated by this, the half a uh, half open, half closed interval is called a lower limits topology. This is denoted as RL. Okay, just just to let you know. And finally, we'll come to what is a subbasis. So for X is a set of collections, is a subbasis of X if the unions of sets in X uh, is equal to X. Very easy. And the topology generated. The topology generated by the subbasis is to say that well you're open, we specify our open sets for of being that you are union, it is a union of finite intersections in S. Okay? So can, if you have S1 is some finite intersection, S2 is some finite intersection, then you like blah blah blah. So you should be equal to union of I don't know, like like of them, but each of them is like the intersection of sets and x, right? This is the definition, union of finite intersections and x. So we have to verify, well, this topology, right, we specify this, well, we have to check that it is a topology or not, right? to check it if it's actually a topology on a set. So we're going to verify. Well, it turns out that it suffices to show the finite intersections and in s is a basis in X. Right. If we show this, all the finite intersections, right, the collections of finite intersection S is a basis in X. So if we have a basis in X, then first we know that T is equal to the collection of unions of finite intersections. Okay, so we have T is equal to this. Now if T prime is a topology generated by those unions, right? So the finite intersections, right? We have a collection of finite intersections, and if this if them is a basis in X, then let T prime be the topology generated by those finite intersections, right? Then the lemma above states that T prime is equal to T. Because if you are topology generated by the, by those, uh, I'm sorry, should be intersections. I'm so sorry. Intersections. By those intersections. Right. So, okay. Let me be more clear. So if we can show that as is a basis in X. Now, by definition, T is all the collection of unions of finite intersections. And since this is a basis in X, we can talk about the topology generated by uh, the intersections, right? Finite intersections. Now, if your topology generated by those finite intersections, then this topology is all the unions of finite intersections, right? It is as the above dilemma we just showed, right? The collection of arbitrary unions, right? We just showed this. And then t is t prime is equal to t. Then we know that t is a topology because t prime is a topology. Right. So here's the, the logic. Okay, so let's verify that. Let's verify S is a basis. Well, condition one is already done, right? Condition one of a basis because uh Union of a set in S is equal to X, right? We 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 state this already. Subbasis, it's a union of sets in S is equal to X. So it's, a, it's already done. And condition two is that well, if B one is some finite intersection, B two is some finite intersection. Then, their intersection is again a finite intersection, right? Which is an S. Now, let B three equals to their intersection, which gives two, right? Because B three is equal to this, well, which is again also the if we define B3 is equal to this, then B3 is a subset of B1 is a B2. Because they're equal, then they're sub contain each other. Right. 
so it gives two. So, okay, so, so overall, our picture is that, well, given a sub-basis, if we have a sub-basis, S, so if we have a sub-basis, um, S, right, we take finite, we take finite intersections, gives us a basis, right? For a basis, we again, uh, by arbitrary union, gives a topology, right? Okay, so this is kind of, this is kind of, Right? So this is the big picture. Right? So this is like all I want to say for the first lecture. Okay? So, yeah. This is pretty, pretty much it. And we're going to continue uh, next time. Okay? So see you guys.